We're double dipping on talent in this episode of Design Today. I reached out to Lauren Treasure after doing a live Q&A session with her a couple months back. She's a VP of product at Chatbooks, which is a staple of our family. She comes from a product management background, and I invited her to come on and speak about building a positive and effective relationship between PM and UX. Uh, it was her idea to bring on one of her lead UX designers on the show as well. Chantel Ball is a brilliant UX designer at Chatbooks, and together, Lauren and Chantel have figured out how to empower each other. Also, when you finish the episode, you won't have to wait long to hear from Lauren again, as she'll be speaking next week at the Front Conference. So find her and say hi. Let's get into this episode. Chantel, this is really a treat for me to have someone of your caliber, both of you coming on the show on the same podcast. This is really cool. I appreciate the time. Thanks for having yeah, us. Yeah, thanks. This is going to be a lot of fun. Um, I initially, Lauren, reached out to you a couple months back mm -hmm. uh, because of we met at the Product Hive meetup. Mm -hmm. And after kind of hearing some of your thoughts at that Product Hive event, I go, wow, that is a lot of talent that I think we could get some benefit out of on a podcast. So I really appreciate your willingness to, to join us on the show. Well, thank you. Yeah, this is my first time on a podcast, so it's great for me too. So here we go. <laughs> and then when I heard that Chantel wanted to join this on the podcast, this is fantastic because our topic today, we're going to be talking about facilitating a better uh, UX to product management uh, relationship. And to have the two of you share some of your experiences that you have currently, I think this is going to be a great topic. So before we get too into it, do you guys mind introducing yourself? Sure. Yeah. Uh, so my name's Lauren. I uh, am on the product side. So I am currently the VP of product at a company here in Utah called Chatbooks. And prior to that, I was a product manager and led some product teams at Ancestry on the DNA product and also in family history. Um, before that is actually when Chantal and I first met, so we'll give that away, um, <laughs> at a company called Orca Health, a uh, uh -huh. technology startup in healthcare here in Utah as well. Cool. Um, I initially started out in research, though, and uh, at, at Orca made the shift from research into product management. Oh, cool. I did not know that. And Chantal, how did you get into UX and then how did you guys end up at Orca together? Yeah, so I um, did a graphic design program at BYU and then I just, I started as an intern at Orca mm -hmm. and just kind of slipped into this like, oh, what is this? This is more than just graphic design, but I really like it and mm -hmm. I kind of want to keep with it. And so I just kept looking for opportunities and then I went to the LDS church and I worked on the gospel library app Cool. with a lot of users and a lot of problems to solve, mm -hmm. which is a very challenging and very exciting as well. And then Lauren recruited me back to Chatbooks to come over and lead the UX team. That's so cool. That's where I'm now. Did you hire her? Mm -hmm. yeah. So you're, oh, that's cool. So you yes. guys had an Actually, existing... third time. So I hired her as an intern. Because yeah. I saw she was from Switzerland, um, okay. and that English was her third language, and I was like, "We've got to get her." Interview. And then she was English really, is your she was really third great. Third language, <laughs> technically, yes. Okay, that's amazing. <laughs> yes, although my second language is very much dwindling. Which is what French. Okay, you don't get a lot of opportunity to speak that here. <laughs> so you guys obviously have a pretty tight relationship stemming from yeah. internship days. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So yeah. what? So years ago. Yeah. What made her stand out to you six years ago? Is that what you said? Seven, seven, seven years ago? Eight, yeah, eight, I don't even seven know. Seven or eight yeah. years ago? Yeah. It's been a while. Um, I mean, like I said, initially I was like, wow, she's from Switzerland. That's really cool. Uh, but she also had a resume that stood out from every other intern application. It looked really nice and she paid attention to detail. And so that brought, you know, that was the reason for bringing her in. But um, I initially met her and was immediately it was clear that she has a lot of empathy and understanding for how human beings behave and work and i knew that that was going to be something really valuable especially in what we were working on so that's uh why i was so excited about working with her initially that's cool that speaks high remarks for you <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome you probably never asked me that no <laughs> i've never heard that part <laughs> cool. 
that's very cool. And so something happened that I assume when you guys first started working together, at, as that kind of evolved, mm-hmm. you said, I want her to come with me to chat books as well. Mm-hmm. And is that going back to the empathy piece or what was it that you said, I, I need her on my team still? Uh, that is part of it for sure. But she's also a really talented designer and she's super fast. And we also work really well together, which is part of why we're here today is because that's super important. Mm -hmm. Um, We had a great relationship and everything felt like a partnership that we tackled together as opposed to working independently and then coming together. So your experience that you had at the LDS Church working on their app probably prepared you a little bit for working on at Chatbooks. I mean, you've got a huge user group there. Yeah. And I assume that Chatbooks mm-hmm. is going to have an equally matched user group there as well. But that's certainly the hope. Yeah, yeah. yeah definitely. That's the, point. <laughs> that's the point. Even not quite there yet. Yeah. I mean, yeah. you're on I'm a trajectory for some. I mean, Chatbooks, you heard my wife before when you guys mm-hmm. walked in the house. We're huge Chatbooks fans. Yeah. So you've got a growing user base. That's really cool. Definitely. Yeah, yeah it's really exciting. I want to get into this topic of PM and UX relationship. Um, let's talk a little bit about some of those things that you've found that have really helped you two uh, work well together and maybe some of the growing pains that I, I assume, maybe you guys didn't go through any growing pains together, um, but maybe some of those experiences that you guys had that really created a a strong bond what were some of those things i think that initially both of us were still somewhat new into developing products like i said i was in research and she was starting an internship Mm -hmm. and so i think the fact that both of us were new and didn't really have a set way of doing things helped us to work as equal partners Mm -hmm. Um, and i think that that was something really critical to learn early on and something that i think both of us i mean i don't want to speak for you but I think both of us have treated all of our relationships with UX or PM in that same way of this is a partnership. We need to do this together. Mm -hmm. And no one's opinion is more important than the others. Yeah, I think also a a big part of that is the respect for each other. I have never because I started as an intern. Right. And you you hear stories about internships and how you Mm -hmm. treat it like dirt. But Mm -hmm. I never once felt like I was the intern at the company. I was always met with a lot of respect and a lot of. Um, you're here to contribute and we value your opinion. You're always heard and very much appreciated. And so I think that really helped to build that relationship from the start because I always felt like I could speak up and I had value and and we respected each other from the start. How much of it do you think, like when you talk about like building this relationship and kind of understanding each other, how much of that conversation that you guys were having early on was non-work related? I mean, did you guys feel like you had to get to know each other personally in order to work well together? Uh, I think that's important to continue and build a relationship. I don't know that initially it was as critical, but we did develop that relationship over Mm -hmm. time. I think just showing that you care about the other person, even if you're not best friends right away, you know, and also uh, we were the only females at the company at the time. And so I think everyone expected us to be. Uh, friends because of that. Oh my gosh. Uh, but, um, but I think it was more just you need to care about each other and, and show each other that you care whether yeah. that means like you know everything right on day one or not. You know because I think a lot of people think that maybe like you know if, if this is my group that I have to work with every day I better become best friends with them. Do you find that that's important? I don't think that's mm-hmm. necessary at all. No. To be honest, I don't think that you have to be best friends with people that you work with, because as long as you respect them for their expertise, I think that you can work very well together, even if you have nothing in common outside of work. Mm-hmm. Interesting. I agree. I think, I mean, something that we talk about at Chatbooks all the time is that we're trying to model after a sports team rather than a family, right? We're, oh, we I want good relationships for working together. And you obviously have great relationships with teammates. But you don't have to treat them like your sibling, you know, or a cousin or somebody that you're related to. And I think that's kind of how we treat it. Oh, I love that. I've never heard that before because you always get this mindset of like, you know, family is the epitome of tightness and togetherness. And Mm -hmm. then when people have confrontation or whatever, you're like, well, families fight, you know, that happens. (laughs) Um, And so they kind of get this mantra of like, it's okay to to be found but I like how you said this teamwork because on a team Mm -hmm. you've got people who are very much experts at their position Mm -hmm. yeah and that's how you treat each other is allow them then to be experts in their position absolutely yeah and I think that's that's exactly what I was trying to say with the respect right you you respect each other for your expertise and so I think that's super important Mm -hmm. let me ask you what are some of the things that Lauren does that as 
you know, a UX designer, you're going, I love the fact that I've got, and I'm going to say PM, but I know you're much more than a PM at this point in time. Let's go with PM. (laughs) (laughs) But what are the things that she's done as kind of that product manager that have really helped you as a UX designer? Um, Yeah, I think, I think the biggest thing is just valuing my expertise and knowing that like I have done this for a while and I kind of know some of, you know, the the reins of it all Mm -hmm. and she just gives me a lot of freedom that way and we're never trying to we're always I mean this is hard to explain in the third language (laughs) (laughs) you can't use that excuse anymore (laughs) Uh, I feel like we're never stepping on each other's toes yeah we have a ton of overlap and I think we appreciate that about each other and about each other's positions so much and I think that's what makes us work well together is that we can truly work as a team and sometimes she does a little bit more of the sketching and sometimes I do a little bit more of the strategy and that's totally fine because we're never worried about oh she's going to take my position you know we're we know that we value each other in what we do and I think that has really helped Mm-hmm. Have you worked with other PMs throughout yeah. your career? Mm-hmm. What are some expectations that you have in a product manager? Um, I have been lucky enough to have worked with really great PMs. That's so great. I, I'll just kind of go off of what they've done that I've really appreciated. Yeah. And I think one of the things is, is again, like seeing me as an expert in the field and um, one of the PMs at the LDS Church was very good about that and had a lot of opinions, obviously, uh-huh. and had a lot of input. But then when it came down to um, making decisions on specific things, he always asked for my opinion and he always valued what I had to say and never tried to overrule me yeah. with his title or yeah. stakeholderness or any of that. And I think that's really important. Yeah. That's awesome. I want to flip the tables now and ask you the same questions on the other side. As a PM, what are some things that Chantel has done as a UX designer that have really helped you fulfill your responsibilities? Yeah, um, I think we were having this conversation earlier today that a lot of what we do as a product manager and UX designer overlap. And I think that that's one thing I appreciate is when they feel like they can also contribute to what is our strategy? What is our vision? Where are we going with this? Um, I think if a PM tries to do that on their own, they will be missing a big uh, a big portion of what the UX designer brings to the table. Mm-hmm. And so I've always appreciated, and I've worked with great UX designers as well, Chantal included, but uh, I've worked with so many that feel like they can contribute and want to contribute to what is our strategy and why are mm-hmm. we doing this? And they want to sit in on user interviews and Um, You know, they want to know what the executive team is thinking. And uh, even though, you know, she makes really great designs and I make a lot of PowerPoints. So our visual languages are a little bit different. um, We feel equally able to um, contribute to each other's work. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, you throughout your career, you've worked with, I assume, a handful of product managers. You've trained and mentored a handful Mm -hmm. of product managers. I can't tell you how many times I've heard product managers say something to UX like, I can't design, so I really need to help you. I really need you to help me, you know, figure this thing out. Mm-hmm. And they, they look at UX as like, I've got the brains. Yeah. You've got the design. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Now let's come together. Mm-hmm. I don't imagine that's how you two work. No, no. not even close. <laughs> so what's, what's the clarification on that? I mean, what do you expect out of your product managers that you hire? I expect them to think they don't know everything. I there's I, there's this, been this saying, I think it's like a PM is like a mini CEO or a GM of their product or something like that. And um, I get the intent behind that, but I think that the product manager has to be the most collaborative person at the company and come in with the expectation that you're not going to know everything. And it's okay because your job isn't to know everything. It's to bring all the ideas together, right? You need to know what the engineer and the UX designer and marketing mm-hmm. and like all of these people think and bring it together. You know, that's really insightful because right before we started actually recording, we were talking about how you feel like the lines have been blurred a little bit where you're picking up on these mm-hmm. product management skills. You're picking up on these UX skills and you're kind of cross pollinating a little bit. You're kind of mm-hmm. doing a little bit of both. And I'm just thinking out loud is that w- what you're describing right now, I've said on a handful of occasions to UX designers, mm-hmm. you sit at you know the center of the wheel 
and you collaborate uh, and you're the best suited to collaborate and get insights from executives, developers, product managers, QA, customers, and you're kind of the facilitator of all this information mm -hmm. and you're teaching or, or mentoring that product manager should also be sitting in that exact same yeah. seat. Mm -hmm. And then the two of you together, that's a powerful experience. Yeah, absolutely. That's really cool. What have you guys then done to maybe as you guys are sitting next to each other at the center of this wheel, what are some things that you guys have found important maybe in communication or maybe in facilitating the process? Like what really becomes outside of the respect that we talked about earlier, like once mm -hmm. we get down to the nitty gritty, what's important to you guys at that point in time? Yeah, I think communication is key. I think one thing is, uh, and we touched on this a little bit earlier, is that you should have regular one-on-ones between product manager and UX designer to talk about things other than work and be able to, you know, kind of have that relationship to make sure you're, you continue to communicate. Um, but then it's, you should be sitting next to each other. Ideally, I know some teams are remote, but ideally you're right next to each other so you can talk all the time, but you can't just rely on that. I think you need to have regular meetings where you're still grooming the backlog and you're talking through mm -hmm. priorities and, you know, you're all these things, these processy things that I know people don't always love to do, I think are still important, even if you're sitting side by side, because in order to really be an effective partnership, you need to be so aligned. Mm -hmm. If you're trying to partner and collaborate with all these different people on the wheel and one of you is like a little bit this way and the other is a little bit this way, mm -hmm. like, I mean, like physics the wheel's probably not going to uh spin correct it's not going to work is there some things that you've seen chantelle that have helped in really facilitating your ux process and being able to have such tight proximity with lauren i mean it just makes it so easy right like if we if i can just turn around and say hey i had this thought or hey i had this idea and then we can kind of bring the rest of the team in i think that's really important also like we sit at the in the middle of the wheel to bring everybody in and not to exclude anybody yeah. right like we sit together so that we're aligned so that we can bring other people in and have a whole team collaboration yeah i think the ideal outcome of it is that if i'm out of the office or chantal's out of the office anyone on our team could come to either of us and it's likely that we would both know the answer right so you kind of, you kind of fill in for each yeah. other how often do you, are you guys sitting together and having one-on-one -on -one conversations? All the all time. The time. <laughs> yeah. All Happens the, once a day? day. Yeah. But more, more than once yeah. a day, probably. Yeah. Most of the day, I would say. Yeah. How would, if, if someone who's listening doesn't have that type of relationship, what would you say to them? How do you help them gain that? Yeah. That's a great that's question. A great question. I, I, so when I worked at the church, I didn't have um, a PM right next to me. But every week we had multiple meetings set up to have interaction points. Mm -hmm. And so one of them was a design review where every week we would go through, hey, this is what I worked on this week. This is what I have to show you. Give me your thoughts. Um, what should I work on next? Let's get aligned on the backlog. Let's get aligned on all these things that we're trying to do. And then later that week we would present that kind of stuff to the development team and not, I say present, but it was and it was more casual than that, right? Sure. Like it was like getting together and just kind of talking through, hey, this is what we're thinking and here's where we're going. And just having these touch points at least throughout the week is really, really helpful. That's awesome. You know, I see oftentimes uh, a lot of people confuse what the role of a PM is mm -hmm. because at some diff at some companies, uh, again, maybe just because of pure lack of education around it, uh, PM can get misinterpreted as project manager mm -hmm. and UX then works with a project manager, mm -hmm. not in facilitating the best product, but in just here's how we're getting it done. Yeah. What do you recommend for those who are more fulfilling the role of a project manager to really get into the role of a product manager? Yeah, um, there are components of project management in Absolutely. a product manager Absolutely. job. So it's not like they're completely different, but there is a real distinction between the two. And mm -hmm. I think the main part of it is that when you're a product manager, you are strategically thinking about the customer and really getting to know and empathize with them, uh, really understanding what is your objective overall, like what are we trying to achieve here, and mm -hmm. then working with a team to understand what is the solution to do that. And uh, a project manager is trying to make sure that things get done. 
mainly like yeah. you know that's their primary keep objective everybody is on just task. keep them yeah keep the boards clean keep the meetings running mm-hmm. keep the notes keep, keep things going and that's an important role as well but it is very different because it's not it's not so creatively focused and and really customer focused so if someone got hired on at a company for the role of a product manager mm-hmm. yet they feel like the responsibilities are there's i guess fulfilling is more project management mm-hmm. what do you suggest they do at, in their situation i'd just jump in and get involved in the development of the product if there's a ux designer sit with them work with them um get in, involved in user testing and really know your customer research as much as you can marketing probably has research you can look Mm -hmm. at you know survey customers get to know the customer get involved in the development process with ux and engineers um, instead of just following up on people and i think you could just do that on your own i think you know teams would probably welcome having a partner who helps them rather than just like hey did you get that jira ticket done yeah i think just jump in you know i work at domo with uh, who I'll obviously bias will say is probably the best product manager at Domo. Uh, and one of the things that I lean on him so hard for is that he is thinking big picture on the product mm-hmm. um, nonstop. Mm-hmm. And there are things that some people say, like, wasn't that UX designer's responsibility? And to some extent, I would say, yeah, I guess it would be. But sometimes it escapes my mind. And I know that I've got a partner in this. Mm-hmm. An example would be is that you know, our product manager, his name's Cody Smith. He's very close to our, our clients. He's very mm-hmm. close to our customers. Uh, he's setting up phone calls and chatting with them on the phone and setting up webcasts and going mm-hmm. over their pain points and stuff. And a lot of people be like, wasn't well, that the UX designer's job? And I don't feel like he's stepping on my toes. I right. welcome it because sometimes I don't have the bandwidth to be setting up those calls or to mm-hmm. the bandwidth to be initiating those conversations. Uh, and so I really have appreciated that skill set that he has uh, as a UX designer going like, I do feel like this is a joint relationship. And I feel like we've kind of established mm-hmm. what I feel like you guys are describing is mm-hmm. how we're working in tandem to accomplish the same thing. Mm-hmm. Now, let's talk about on the UX side. If uh, UX designers who are listening feel like they have a product manager who may maybe dropping the ball a little bit or mm-hmm. from the UX perspective, they just feel like I expect more of my product manager. Mm-hmm. What do you do in that scenario? What what would be your next step for with coaching or, or grooming that product yeah, manager? What I would think, you do? I think I would set up a lot of like work sessions, brainstorm sessions. Hey, let's get together and like try and define the problem. Let's try and define the problem of our next thing that we're trying to accomplish. What are we trying where are we trying to be in a couple of years? What are we trying to do with this product? And just try to get them involved in like the creative thinking of it all and the future thinking of of things and then get them to to come and sketch and ideate and really like try to figure out like who who are our customers who are our users what are, what do they want why did they come here and just really get them involved in thinking yeah. about this kind of stuff now, now i'm just basing this off of what you just said there but i would assume that lauren you'd probably say the exact same thing for a ux designer mm-hmm. who's yep. not you know getting in tandem with the product manager you'd probably invite yep. them to those meetings you'd do the exact same thing that was just said is that right yeah absolutely it's, it's interesting how this works really then we're talking about how these lot these lines between ux and pm are kind of blurred yeah. you're fulfilling a lot of the same responsibility mm-hmm. you're approaching it as two minds in the same project as opposed mm-hmm. to two people doing their own separate jobs. Mm -hmm. That's really interesting. I love love that insight. That's not something I thought about prior to this podcast. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think it's important. And I mean, if you go back to the sports analogy, if your teammates working together, you might have the same objective, right? You want to win the game or you want to get the product out and have it be successful. And so I think as you can help support each other in your roles, and think about it as just a team that if you both, you know, if you win, you both win, Mm -hmm. then um, I think you'll probably land in a pretty good spot. It's a pretty good way to approach the relationship. Have you guys ever gotten into a scenario, and hopefully this doesn't pin you two to look at each other and be like, ooh, wait, I don't (laughs) know about this. Mm -hmm. Have you ever gotten into a scenario where you're just not on the same page? Um, I am sure it has happened many times. Yeah, I think so. I mean, we must have. Yeah. And that's not a knock on either of you, right? It's, oh, it's it just part. Yeah, that's just normal. My wife and I are not on the same page every yeah. now, right? It, yeah. This type of stuff happens. Yeah. I think we're both very comfortable in voicing our opinions mm-hmm. with each other. Mm-hmm. And how do you set that up, though? I think I mean, it yeah. comes back to respect for each other. 
And I think I'm comfortable with saying I disagree with you mm -hmm. because deep down mm. she knows I still respect her, right? It's yeah. not a diss on her product management skills, never. And so I think that that is it's just like the right kind of relationship. I value you as a coworker, as a product manager, as my partner in crime. And that's why I feel comfortable telling you that I disagree. Mm -hmm. And what and setting would you do that? I mean, is this just like more. a, hey, I need to pull you aside and we need to chat or where is that done? Yeah, probably. Mm -hmm. Like I wouldn't, I wouldn't call it out in a meeting probably unless it was a casual meeting where it was just, we're talking and discussing. Yeah. But I would never try to like, belittle put, yeah, yeah no put or put on the spot or anything like that mm -hmm. because i would appreciate it if she would do that to me right so <laughs> yeah. i try to do the same thing you would tell your vp that you disagree with them oh I every day I have. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> interesting tell me why <laughs> that's usually the follow-up right like uh, we disagree with each other all the time and it's okay kind of state like your share, argument yeah <laughs> Okay, state your case, share the context that I'm missing, and we'll come to an agreement. I think we're also, part of it too, is that we're also very willing at giving in. Mm -hmm. We're not, yeah, I disagree for now, until you have convinced me otherwise, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And I'm very willing to say, okay, yeah, I see your point, I think you might be right. Mm -hmm. So I'm not, I'm not strict, like, on my opinion. Yeah, you don't have a stake in the ground saying, I'm not right. budging. Right. Yeah. I just say, okay, that my initial reaction is to disagree with that statement. But maybe, yeah. you know, let's talk about it some more and figure out, like, where well, we go Well, and I think the it. nature of our work is that a lot of times we'll disagree on something, but we don't make the call. We're going to test it with users, and we're going to put it out there, and we're going to see. Yeah, right. it's not really up to your opinion or my opinion with a lot of things. It's just, well, we're going to user test it or we're going to A-B test it and we're going to figure it out. Yeah, that's so a I lot think of pressure off itself. of it. Yeah. yeah, for sure. Yeah. So we can be in competition and see who wins. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> now, have you ever gotten to just an impasse where you're just both on completely different pages that there, we can't find common ground? Um... I'm I can't sure. think of an example. No. Listeners are going awkward question because I, I think I think it <laughs> comes back to what she said about the user, right? Like, yeah, maybe we still don't agree, and maybe I don't agree with the user, <laughs> but then like, who cares about my opinion? Because sure. the user just told us what they want. Sure. So, mm -hmm. I think I don't think it has happened. Yeah, I don't think I can't think of an example. And that's I, I mean, it was kind of a leading question because I think just based upon what I was hearing from you guys is that, that those situations don't arise because you've got mutual respect for one another and you've got this rela working relationship where we can work this out. Mm -hmm. We can we can discover the right answer, even if yes. we look at this thing differently. It's not a. Well, my record, I'm one and oh, and you're oh and one, and I'm going to get my second win yeah. right now. Mm -hmm. And uh, mm -hmm. you're looking at this in a collaborative experience. I think that's. Yeah. Yeah. That, and I think your listeners, I mean, it would be a good way to approach a disagreement is to say, okay, this is what I think and this is what you think. Let's test it and let's just see. I don't think mm -hmm. anyone would disagree with the suggestion to just test it. Yeah. And it's kind of back to the sports team, right? Like maybe my, my mate didn't do the pass the way I would have done it, but sure. I scored a goal. So like, yeah, we win. Who cares? Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, I totally. Because if our team wins, we win and it doesn't matter. I always use the uh, let's test it as almost like, I don't want to say my cop out, but really, <laughs> early, really early in the career when yeah. I, so I came from marketing background. Okay. Uh, I did a, a cool. minor in web and graphic design, but my background was in marketing where I learned about A-B testing and surveys and focus groups. And that was my introduction to UX before I even knew what UX was. And I had different CEOs that I would work with who were uh, more difficult. <laughs> and uh, they would say things like, you know, I just don't want that color in the product. Mm -hmm. And it's just like, well, that's a hard request. I don't yeah. know how we pull yeah. that off. Mm -hmm. um, and then they get down to like, but and that button needs to be this color. And it's just like, wow, that was a nitpicky thing. I'm willing yeah. to try that mm -hmm. yeah. and we'll mm -hmm. test it. Mm -hmm. yeah. And that way I never felt like I had to pick a fight with anybody. Yeah. Yeah. It was just... Yeah. We'll test it. Sure. It's a non-answer. <laughs> yeah. And I, I think that's where we're lucky too, because that's never, that's not how we approach problems. You're not that's needing not how, that cop out. You're not needing yeah, that like. I don't, I don't need that ever because I know that Lauren will never come to me and say that doesn't look right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I think that comes back to like, she, she trusts my professional opinion. 
You guys have a really awesome working relationship. <laughs> I think those who are listening are going like, whoa, why can't I find something like that? Um, what do you think? I mean, if uh, if someone's not pulling their weight, if somebody's not having this conversation, is it appropriate then to just tomorrow you go into work, you pull your product manager aside, you pull your UX designer aside and say, listen, we need to approach this as, I don't want to say a couple, but as a team, you know, mm-hmm. you and I are at the center of this wheel. I think it's appropriate to work out the differences. Mm -hmm. I think it's appropriate to bury the hatchet on maybe some things that have happened historically that, you know, maybe somebody blew up on somebody and Mm -hmm. I was handled things inappropriately or whatever it may be to find common ground, start fresh and create that relationship. Is that? Yes. Set up a one-on-one and just say, Hey, are we okay? Like, is this the best our relationship can be? And is there anything you would change? And then maybe here's a few things I would change. And yeah, I would talk about it. I think one thing that we have going for us that is hard to train is that we're both naturally not really scared of confrontation. (laughs) And (laughs) we just kind of deal with it and handle Mm -hmm. it and then we get over it. And so that makes it a little bit easier. So I I could imagine that as a UX designer, having a PM that was scared of confrontation or didn't react well to confrontation and that would make it pretty difficult mm-hmm. you know, there's yeah, another, to have that open conversation. Yeah, that, That's true. But there's another aspect to to maybe being scared, not necessarily the confrontation, but of having the conversation. And let's mm-hmm. just say you're new at a company yeah. Yeah. and you don't want to rock the boat. You know, yeah. I felt that even yeah. at Domo, where I don't feel like I'm one who's scared of confrontation, but mm-hmm. I know that the product manager I worked with has been here for years longer than me. Mm-hmm. And so there's this balance of like, is this just how they do things? Mm-hmm. Or, and, and then the mm-hmm. other side of me goes, no, it's time to speak up. Yeah. And yeah. so it's not necessarily like cons- fear of like having the conversation, but you're just trying to feel it out. Yeah. You don't want to be the one who's like, oh, we hired this dude. He's the one who's always complaining over our process. Yeah. Like you don't want to be that person. Yep. So that kind of totally. creates this. Yeah. But I think if handled correctly, again, we even talked about soft skills before we started recording. Yeah. I think handled correctly with respect, mm-hmm. with humility, uh, with you know patience in critique. I've seen that those conversations go really, really well. Yeah, and yeah. I think setting expectations too, like we were talking about earlier, right? I have expectations of a PM. What are those expectations? And clearly voicing them to mm-hmm. the PM mm-hmm. and just saying, hey, I think that for me as a UX designer, it's really great when a PM does blah, 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 blah. Yep. Yeah. And kind of setting that up. And then not really, you don't have to call them out on like, you're not doing this, so uh-huh. you're not fulfilling your job. But just saying, hey, this is what I really have appreciated about other PMs that I've worked with that has really worked well for me. Do you mm-hmm. think that's something that we could figure out as a team yeah. and mm-hmm. that we could do together? Yeah. And just kind of more approaching it softly that way. Yeah. yeah. And I think if you give feedback, ask for feedback as well, right? So it mm-hmm. feels kind of balanced. I mean, I've definitely had different working relationships with other UX designers that I've worked with. Not everyone is as okay with confrontation as Chantal. Like, I know I can just walk over and say whatever and we're going to be fine. Mm -hmm. Um, But I've worked with other designers where that's not the case. And maybe they're more sensitive and, uh, you know, maybe don't uh, take critiques to their design in quite the same way. Right. Um, And so I think you just kind of have to figure out what is the working relationship and in some cases, maybe you need to provide a lot more context up front or you need to change the way that you share critiques and go through things. Um, so I guess figure out a, what is the relationship that your counterpart needs. Yeah, you know, I was in a situation just not too long ago where I think I had failure in this part. You know, Domo's busiest two months are February and March. We've got our big user conference in March. and. Everyone gets a little bit stressed out. Things mm-hmm. get a little bit crazy going leading up to that. And uh, I had a kind of a, uh, this was a couple of weeks after Domo Palooza was over. I had to sit down with one of our directors of engineering. And I learned in that conversation that our expectations of one another were just completely off, which mm-hmm. led to a lot of the miscommunication that took place in that previous mm-hmm. month. Mm-hmm. And it was eye-opening to me because I was very frustrated. And I was going, why is this happening? And at the same time, he was very frustrated, but because of how busy things were and how Mm -hmm. stressful, we didn't take the time to have the conversation. Mm -hmm. And both of us were in agreement after this post conversation that, you know what? It would have been worth that 15 minute conversation Mm -hmm. in the moment, as opposed to just saying like, 
everyone just buck up. We'll get through it. <laughs> yeah. uh, and, and then we'll have the conversation afterwards. Mm-hmm. No, that 15 minutes is totally worth it. Yes. And I loved what you said too about if you're if you're going in to give critique, be prepared to receive critique yeah. because it is a two way two way street. Mm-hmm. It's not one person is doing it wrong and you're doing it right. Yeah. Yeah. No, I appreciate that insight. Definitely. Is there anything else that you guys want to share before we wrap up? Uh, I would just be excited if you're new to working in this relationship, treat it as something that's really great because I think the UX PM combo is really powerful and something that a lot of other parts of the org could learn from. Um, but if it's not working out, like figure out how to make it work and um, it should be a really great partnership, even if you're not best friends. Yeah, Absolutely. I think you guys have demonstrated a solid product management to UX relationship. And so I really appreciate you both coming on the show, sharing some of these insights. You guys have been fantastic. Uh, Lauren, you're speaking at the Front Conference coming up uh, first week of June, right? Yeah. What's your topic? So I'm actually talking about a different type of relationship. (laughs) It's uh, working with marketing and customer support and kind of by extension operations in the topic is really that the product is more than just the user experience. It extends to all different touch points with the customer uh, and integrating that into your process. Very cool. So if people want to connect with you, can they find you guys on LinkedIn? How, yeah. how would you want to yeah. reach out? Yeah, Definitely. I'm on LinkedIn. I'm on LinkedIn. I'm on Instagram. I'm, I have a Twitter account, but yeah. I never use it. It's a, it's a yeah. graveyard. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so maybe, like, maybe LinkedIn. <laughs> Probably. Fantastic. Uh, well, again, I thank you guys so very much for coming on. This means the world to me, and I appreciate it. Yeah, thanks thank for having you. us. Okay, that's great. a wrap for us today. Thank you.